Hey, I just wanted to make a bit of a video about my CRT projector. Recently, the EEPROM decided it would clear itself in every single one of about 200 settings were lost and I had to start again. So, I thought I'd do a bit of a video about it. Alright, first a bit about the projector setup. It's hoisted to the roof via a crane. It's actually inside the roof and there's a pendant up there that allows me to hoist it up and down because it weighs about 65 kilos. I've mounted it on two roller door frames which allow me to slide it backwards and forwards so that I can set the picture size because unlike a modern projector it's not possible to slide a little ring around and set the size. It actually has to be physically set in the correct location. The actual video for the projector is fed from this PC via a device called an HD Fury. This one's an HD Fury 3 that goes to VGA. Then that is split up into B and C connectors that are driven into the back of the projector. I've got red, green, blue, horizontal sync and vertical sync all separately. Now we probably won't see it from here but the sticker on the back says it was made in 1997. September 1997 actually so that makes it nearly 22 years old. Fairly impressive. Um, it's an NEC multi-sync XG110 LC so that means it can sync to 110 kilohertz horizontal resolution. Now that should allow a res resolution of approximately 2560 by 2000 I believe, the 4-3 aspect ratio. I don't run it anywhere near that high, it won't even resolve that, you won't be able to see it. I run it at 1920 by 1080 at 96 hertz interlace and that works really well. Um, finally the LC means that the lenses are liquid coupled and that helps with the contrast ratio a lot because the best feature of CRT projectors is, because they don't have a backlight, because the light is thrown directly from the phosphor on the tubes, they can do it absolute perfect black, unlike a projector that uses a backlight, which is quite impressive. Anyway, I'm going to go through the setup process and try and do a voiceover, which I haven't done before, so bear with me, I hope it comes out alright. Right, here we go, I hope this works. First off, I try and set up the raster position because the um, projector screen is actually up a bit higher than it should be so I've got to move the raster up. Initially I start off doing the A-STIG but yeah here I do the raster centering and then I'll move on to the astigmatism. Now the astigmatism actually changes the shape of the dots that come out with the, of the, like the beam that comes out of the phosphor. They sort of overlies or turn into little slitty lines so you have to change these settings and you won't really see it here but yeah you change them you have to change it in the center each corner each side for every single color it's quite a pain you see me going backwards and forwards trying to get it right and I'll run around each side of the projector trying to get each one of those dots to be an actual dot rather than like an oval or a slanty line now, it's particularly difficult on blue green's not too bad red's the easiest because it's the easiest to see and green is the most important because the eye tends to pick up the most detail in the green now this between this and the focus setting which comes in a minute these two settings interact with each other and you really meant to go backwards and forwards quite a bit to get this right it's actually quite a pain quite a long painstaking process i've read on some forums that some people spend several hours just getting the green right it's absolutely insane but this step is what allows you to get your clarity between the astigmatism and the focus if you don't get that right you just can't resolve 1080p properly i mean there's no point trying to align the three colors together unless the, do the, the beams that they're throwing are perfectly sharp so now i've gone onto the focus it's a similar process all three colors red green and blue have to go through and set the focus middle edge corner and there's little H's and you just basically, I run the settings backwards and forwards, run around each one and try to get the H to be as clear as I possibly can. And as I said, I should really go back to the A stig and backwards and forwards a couple of times doing this because they actually interact, but I just wanted to watch some content. I was pretty happy with how it came out anyway. So yeah, I think I'll go through this process for a bit longer. Yeah, so edge on the green and I'll probably do the blue at the end. Again, the blue is the worst to set up. For some reason, there's something wrong with the blue in this projector and it just doesn't work properly at the edges. 
blue is probably of least importance so it doesn't really affect the quality of the picture as much as the green and the red it's more more for help it helps with the white it doesn't seem to matter if your blue is off a little bit or at least out of focus it's actually a setting in the projector to deliberately defocus the blue to help with the whites a bit yeah you'll see me stuff around with it for quite a bit of time trying to get it right but at the far edges it just seems to be impossible to quite get it. I don't know if there's something wrong with the projector or that's just the way it is. Okay, next I start with the static convergence. The idea is to get all three beams exactly converging in the center. Then I, then I tilt, tilt them, get those lines all set up right. Yeah, you see it coming back into place. I stuffed around with something that wasn't important. Okay, the bow, yeah, try and get the bow set up. Again, all three, all three colors they have to be done independently and then get them to line each, out with each other. Now amplitude, this is basically, well amplitude is fairly obvious how far it stretches out, then linearity is basically the amplitude difference side to side, it's done for each colour in each of the x and y directions, and you have to generally go backwards and forwards between amplitude and linearity quite a few times to get it right. Keystone, that's sort of the difference in height and width between the top and the bottom or the left and the right. I think I actually, yeah, I actually didn't have the autosave feature turned on and I lost all of those settings because I didn't hit store and Windows went to screensaver mode, jumped the resolution out and the projector dumped everything so I did all of what I just talked about all over again which kind of sucked. Anyway, I got it a bit quicker this time around again which went linearity amplitude, going backwards and forwards between all the colours to get them pretty close. Then I do a keystone individually for each colour, so that allows me to change the tilt of the lines just at the edges. Again, it's for each colour. Okay, doing the keystone, then key up the pin cushion, which is sort of the curve, just at the edges for each colour. You'll see it's slowly coming in into focus, like all of the colours will slowly be overlaying better. And I'm not worried about the, the shape so much of all of the all of the lines, like the total overall geometry, I'll fix that at the end. Okay, so now I start stuffing around with another convergence pattern that I like to use. Sort of helps me get a bit of a... Yeah, it gets, helps me get the actual position right. I've done the key, the main keystone, main size. Try and get it right. And I sort of get it semi-straight. Then I'll look at the edges of this and you can see the individual colours sort of don't line up in their squares properly. So you'll see me battle with that for quite a bit of time. I oh, set the contrast back down. Originally, I had the contrast flat out to set the focus, but if you've got the contrast flat out when you're doing this, it tends to flare. It tends to flare it up, and you can't quite get it as good with the contrast right up. And you're not meant to run the projector with flat out contrast because it actually wears the tubes out a lot quicker than you need to. Okay, so yeah, I just go backwards and forwards between all the previous settings, trying to get them to work. So pretty much everything interacts with itself, and even. You can turn the projector on the next day after setting this on, let it warm up, and you'll still have to do a little bit of trim just to get, just to get it right. It's an absolute pain. That's the nature of having a CRT projector. You just have to put up with it. Right, I'm not quite sure what I've done there. I think I've probably got another beer and then come back into this again from frustration. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm still stuffing our settings. Gone back to some of the main root ones, like the, the bow and that. What I probably should have done is gone back to the inbuilt crosshatch pattern a little bit earlier because this pattern is good for fine tuning, but in this case where I'm at at the moment, it's just causing me more grief than it needs to. But we'll see that happen shortly, I imagine. Basically, you can spend hours just stuffing around, going round and round in circles, trying to get little bits right. Yeah, I've gone back and had a look at the colour, then I've seen some blue flaring off the sides of the white there, and I've gone backwards and forwards, didn't like that. Like I said, I should have gone straight back, straight back for the crosshatch pattern, but no, I've decided to battle on. You can see me mindlessly going round and round in circles here. Okay, yeah, I've set my white balance now. So you've got to, you've just got to set the balance of the guns, red, white, red, green, and blue, so that white looks all right. So I'm working with the drive control. The drive control also helps with the like the blurring flare. 
Okay, so now I've come back to the crosshatch pattern. I should have been in the first place. You can see it's actually pretty good here. It'll be the blue that's the biggest problem. And I'm just working on the main geometry now. I must have been pretty happy with it by this stage. Oh no, I'm still going around doing some little tweaks. Now, it's worth noting it's not actually possible to get it 100% perfectly square without any bends in it. It's just not doable. You just have to put up with a bit of a compromise. But all in all, it's not that bad. And you won't see it in a movie. It's only if you've got something like this where you've got square lines that you really notice it. Right, I think at this stage, have I finished? Have I finished? Yeah, I've decided to go and do something else for quite some time. Screensaver is cranking. Oh, it's also funny, I've accidentally, when I've hooked the BNCs up, got the, I think the red and the blue switched because I wasn't paying attention to the order so then I go and watch this movie in red and blue switch. I actually watched the whole of this episode with the red and blue switch I'm going to use their faces a strange colour <laughs> because it's a sci-fi show I thought it was normal but no red and blue are swapped over but fortunately it doesn't affect the setup of the projector I just swapped those connections over and it was, it was just fine after that Okay, so there it is. It's done. It's the end of the voiceover too. I hope it wasn't too bad. And finally done. Projector is running again and I can watch it. I've been leaving this for weeks and weeks and weeks as I dreaded the process. I think it took about 90 minutes. And I'm sure plenty of CRT projector experts out there will tell you I took a lot of steps out. I skipped a lot. Some of them take eight hours to do that setup. So yeah, I'm sure it's still not perfect, but I just want it to work. And I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. And now for the why do I bother? Well, I am addicted to CRTs. I actually hate watching video on LCDs. I'm sure modern OLED is better, but Screen burn's a problem, and they're ridiculously expensive, and I think until we get micro LED in the mainstream and available, we really haven't got anything better than CRT. So, when I'm not watching the CRT projector, I'm using my KVHR32 and 1080i to watch my content. Otherwise, on a computer, I use an LCD, because LCDs are unquestionably fine for static content, but when it comes to moving and doing such colours as red, nothing can beat a CRT. And yes, I've been forgetting to say this. Please like, please subscribe, please support these videos because it really does suck making them for about 10 views. Thank you.